Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Our creed at Deep Adventure Ministries is that the most radical thing you can do in life is abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. And I'm going to invite you right now to come with me to the wall. This is a call to the wall. I love the, the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah uh, was uh, given permission by the king when he was in exile, to go back to Jerusalem and to rebuild the walls. And the way those walls were rebuilt is he challenged the families that were there to rebuild the wall. And, the, and several of the chapters are just, this man and his family rebuilt the wall from here to here. And this man and his family rebuilt the wall from here to here. And this man and his family rebuilt the wall from here to here. And it makes a full circle of the wall. It's, it's a man leading his family, the domestic church, uh, that will rebuild the wall. The Holy Spirit is challenging men to step into the breach. But what, what do you do when you're there? Remember, uh, in, in, the, in that same story, we see men, as they were beginning to be successful, people started to hate them. They began to, uh, they began to uh, Twitter campaigns against them. They came and attacked them with swords and, and uh, arrows. And so what they did is each man, as he was working, would have another man standing next to him with a spear and a shield to protect him. And the men that were carrying supplies, they always had one sword in their hand and the, the rock and the mortar in the other hand. And when there was a problem, there was a, 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 the horn was sounded and people would run to that area of the wall that needed to be repaired. Men, we need to stand with each other. You can't do this fight alone. And so many men, they think they're Clint Eastwood or John Wayne or something. You're that strong, silent type. You're, you're perfect. You're holy. You don't have a problem with pornography. You don't have financial issues. Your children all love and respect and obey you. But we know that's not the real world. The real world is that we live, we're all Rocky Balboa. Don't be ashamed because you've been knocked down. Remember what Rocky said. It's not getting down. It's whether you get up and move forward. But we need our brothers to stand with us, to lift us up and move together. And so I'm challenging you men. We have a group called Bears Man Cave where you can go to our website, deepadventure.com. You can join the cave. Uh, we give you access to a secret Facebook group where the men challenge, encourage, uh, uh, share with it one another, ask each other for prayer. And then every two or three weeks, a random, one random evening, we just get together. We have a Zoom video chat. We can all see each other. We talk story about what's going on, how we can pray and help each other. And then we do about a, uh, the rest of the hour um, going through uh, a study of the virtues. So you can't, you can't do this alone. You, you've got, if you don't have a men's group in your church, start one. You're going to be surprised how everyone, so many people are dealing with the same things that you're so ashamed of. Everyone else is dealing with that too. Start a men's group. Go to a men's conference. Do a That Man As You program in your church. Um, but men, we need to come together. We not only need to step into the breach, we need to make a stand. We have to hold our ground. We need to be not just a wall, we need to be a beacon that people can see. That man is standing for unconditional love. He's standing for virtue. He's standing for uh, his core beliefs. And we have a man like that with us that I got to spend some time with. He and his son, Jack, about two, uh, just a few months ago when we were shooting Long Ride Home up in Ohio. We have Matthew Leonard with us today. Hey, Matthew. Welcome to the How show. How you doing, Bear? Hey, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. I'm jealous of his voice. Shouldn't I be you guys? Listen to that voice. <laughs> it's like, it's, I call him the voice. He's meant for, he's meant for radio, I guess, or for, for TV. But thanks for coming on the show. It's my pleasure. We were, we were uh, filming uh, a, a season of Long Ride Home. We had taken the car train up, the Amtrak car train from Cocoa Beach up to D.C. and filmed in there. And we were on our way to uh, Cleveland, Ohio. We stopped in at Steubenville. The moment we came into Franciscan University, peace, uh, the presence of God. And then we met with you and you met, we met with your son Jack up, on that, up by the Grotto of Mary and just had a great time. 
it's a beautiful place, isn't it? And uh, it's actually where I came into the church, Bear. And uh, really, the grace of the Holy Spirit just flows through that place. And it's such a uh, there's a beautiful spirit about the campus and the kids that are there. And uh, this is where I'm going to send my kids to school. And there's a lot of great things happening there. And as I said, it's where I came into the church. And so I have a real fondness for the university. And we got to interview your new president and Dr. Mark Miravella, who was one of my professors when I'm going to the online school there. Well, tell us about that, about your um, journey towards uh, becoming a, a Catholic and your, and, your, and your love for the Lord. Well, it's a, I'll, I'll try and condense it for you, but I'm a pastor's kid. Uh, my dad was a Methodist pastor and then a Pentecostal pastor. And those are opposite ends of the spectrum, if you know anything about the Protestant world. And we bounced around from church to church. And I went to all kinds of different, uh, you know, schools, a Calvinist high school. And I was at Oral Roberts University. And I graduated from a Swedish Covenant University. And I was here, there and everywhere in the Protestant world. Mm. And it, since one of the underlying tenets of Protestantism is sola scriptura, at some point it kind of dawned on me like, hey, if the Bible's the only authority, how come all these guys interpret it differently? And that was kind of my initial aha moment. I never dreamed in a million years that I would start making my way toward the Catholic Church because the Catholics, you know, they were verboten. We're not going to go there. Those guys aren't even Christians for crying out loud. They're right. going to go to hell. Right. So uh, that was not on my mind. But you know what? If you are... If you are really intellectually honest and you really open yourself up to the grace of Jesus Christ, there's really no way out of the Catholic faith. Uh, you know, we all know it has its warts and all the rest of it, but it's the pearl of Jesus Christ, or the pearl of great price, because the church is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And it, it, is, it is worth giving up the life that I had before. It's, it's worth you know, I tell us to cradle Catholics all the time. You guys are the most blessed people on the face of the planet because you had this handed to you from the very beginning. I'm not trying to elevate converts in the church. Yes, we give things up. But you know what? As as cradle Catholics, you guys are called to give things up, too. You're called to give up your own life. And so you sacrifice even the way you were raised and what you think was the truth in order to embrace the real truth in the Catholic faith. And Boy, that night bear that I came into the church uh, at Franciscan, it was the culmination of years of prayer and tears and study and getting rid of a bunch of baggage that I had personally and baggage that I had about the faith and all the rest of it. And I'll never forget that the night at the Easter vigil night, one of the guys who was in the RCIA class with me, he made this really stunning statement to me. He said, and he, he was just still deciding if he was going to pull the trigger and do this. Mm -hmm. And he said, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to be a saint. Mm. And I was like, whoa. Like I hadn't thought about it in those terms before because, you know, we, the way we grew up, we're like, you know, Billy Graham was really cool. And, you know, there were these other figures in the church, but we didn't call him St. Billy Graham. Mm -hmm. uh, it just was a, a totally different mind shift. And that statement has stuck with me throughout my conversion and my initial years in the church. And I think it's penetrated even more deeply into my heart. And I love the Catholic faith. And I want to be is a saint. I want to be a saintly man, as you were talking about at the beginning of the show. We need this. This, this is what every one of us is called, called to. Well, I know that uh, there's different requirements to be actually canonized as a saint. One of them is heroic virtue. That's my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. Uh, what, what do you see for, for men who, uh, you know, to be a, a saint, you have to be manly, if you're a man. Not less manly, not the androgynous neighbor that uh, Simpson has, but to actually be more manly, uh, what, what, what do you see as, as what the profile of a, a real man of God is? You know, one of the things I think that is completely lost uh, to so many of the men in the Catholic faith is uh, the fact that you have to have a life of prayer. And it's easy to talk about it, but even the catechism talks about prayer as a battle. And every one of us is called to be an active contemplative. And that doesn't mean we all are supposed to be monks, you know, as men hanging out in the, the hinterlands. But it means that we're all supposed to uh, enter into a, a life of active contemplation. And what does that mean? Well, the command, what are the, the major commandments? Love your neighbor, love God. Right? That's what active contemplation is ordered to. We are active in our, our love, the manifesting the love of God toward our neighbor. But we can't do that unless you have the contemplative life. 
It, it, that's the love you have ordered to God. And so you have to grow in that love of God. And the way that we do this is by developing a real life of prayer. You can go to mass every single day and you can still be in mortal sin. Is it sacrilege if you're receiving the Eucharist? Absolutely. But you can still do it. You can go through the motions. But all the spiritual greats talk about the fact that you can't have a deep life of prayer, particularly meditative prayer, authentic Catholic meditation, and be in a state of mortal sin. They cannot coexist. One is going to leave. So if you stick with it in your life of prayer and you're making use of the sacrament of confession, you will grow in those virtues that you're confessing. That really, to me, is the foundation of being a Catholic man, Bear. That's powerful. You know, it's everyone I've talked to lately, when I ask them what is the key to manliness, they will say, I just interviewed Father Larry Richards, it's prayer. It starts with prayer. It starts with the personal relationship. Uh, these thing, challenge, Some of the challenges we have in our life, we cannot overcome, and with, overcome without the power of God. We're talking to Matthew Leonard. What's the best place they can find you? Matthew, right now. I know. The, the best place right now is what I've devoted my life to, which is teaching about this particular kind of thing, and it's at nextlevelcatholicacademy.com. Nextlevelcatholicacademy.com. Next, nextlevelcatholicacademy.com. And, of course, Matthew is available. He speaks. Uh, whenever I talk to him, I have to ask him, where are you? You know, <laughs> uh, This is the Bear Wasik Adventure. We'll be right back with more. That's right. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We're Having that, we're, this show uh, we have today is with Matthew Leonard, and we recorded this several months ago. I got to tell you something really cool that happened to be this morning at 7:15 a.m. Uh, bear time. 7:15 a.m. Bear time is where I ever I happen to be. Usually, it's next to an ocean. At 7 a.m. Bear time, wherever I am in the world, I uh, on Monday through Friday, I turn on Facebook Live. We record it. It goes up to YouTube, so you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, the Bear Wozniak YouTube channel. And we go through the Catholic Catechism. Three years ago, I did that for the first time, and I stumbled around and began to understand what the Lord was doing. And uh, we've done that. We did that for three years, and today, we did the final, final paragraph of the Catechism. It took three years, and we said the Amen. And it was just so cool. But guess what? We're going to do tomorrow. We're going to start over. Uh, the the Catechism itself. Uh, it says to us we should meditate. We should use it for lectio divina and to meditate. Um, Father Larry Richards, who I recently interviewed, his website is called reasonforourhope.org. The reasonforourhope.org. Those were the words uh, uh, of Peter. We need to understand our faith and to just read the Bible without having the the church that gave us the Bible that canonized the Scripture to help interpret it. We can uh, actually go, uh, go into very confusing and, and difficult ways, but the catechism is so rich that it will come at you like a sword. It'll do a surgical uh, procedure on your heart, and, and then as you read Scripture, you'll be invited, as you read Scripture, and you go, oh, I read this in the catechism. It'll cause you to go deeper and deeper. So join us. Uh, go to Deep Adventure uh, on Facebook, the Bear Wastick Deep Adventure fan page, and follow us, and then you'll be notified whenever I go on the air to do. And guess what? We're starting over right now, 
and we're doing uh, uh, we're starting with the DDK, the 50 AD, the original catechism. And then Monday through Thursday, we're going to be doing the new catechism. And on Fridays, we're going to do the, the catechism from the Council of Trent. Because the church is the same, just like Jesus, the same yesterday, today, for always. Because Matthew Leonard said so. He said, uh, when you're at home in the church, you're in home, home in Christ, because it's the same. We are the body of Christ. Matthew Leonard, aloha. Aloha, Bear. I love your son, Jack. Love that he's a, guy. He's a great kid. There's no doubt. I love him. And I, I know when we were on that long, weary ride, uh, we got we got to this beautiful oasis of Francis, Franciscan University. We met with you and Jack. Tell us about Jack. Jack, uh, man, what, how do you start talking about your own son? He's my firstborn son. So I have six kids, and uh, he's my first boy. And his real name is actually John Paul. And I named him that because John Paul was the Pope when I became Catholic. And uh, I got to see him at, at the Wednesday audience in Rome just after I'd converted. And he he played such a, a pivotal role in my understanding of the Catholic faith. And so I wanted to name my son after him. But uh, because there are so many kids named John Paul, especially here in Steubenville, I had to nickname <laughs> him Jack. You know, just so he could, he'd know who was talking That's to so him. That's so cool, man. That's so cool. <laughs> but he's a great kid. He's the kind of kid that uh, like every dad... Uh, dreams of having in the sense that he never complains about anything. If he's sick, he doesn't even tell you hardly. And uh, it, you, you give him a job and he just does it. And I think I told you this when we were filming uh, your show, Bear, and that is that yeah, a couple of times, in fact, it just happened a few days ago, I walk by his room and I'll just kind of peek in the door and he's sitting there reading his Bible. Mm. Now, I don't know how you teach that. Obviously, my wife is doing something right because she's probably the primary influence on him. And you're leading by example. He sees you reading. You know, he understands. Yeah, you know what? We pray together, uh, and I, I think, and I hope, and that that not just rubs off on them, but we talk about this. Uh, you know, we, we try and talk about. I try and talk about the importance of the life of prayer, and you're never too young to learn these things. I think all too often we kind of look at our kids and go, oh, okay, well, maybe one day they'll grow up and we rely on our Catholic schools if they happen to be doing that or our homeschool curriculum or, you know, God forbid, the public school curriculum. Mm -hmm. But uh, we think, well, they're going to get it at church or from someone else. No, as, as dads, we have to talk about these things and we have to lead by example. And, uh, you know, so far, so good as far as Jack is concerned, but he's just a great kid. I love, I love that guy. It, it says a lot about you. You know, you're, you're leading by example. He sees you in prayer. What, how do you guys pray together as a family, by the way? We generally pray, uh, we will pray a rosary as far as we can get on it. Generally, we get a decade in on our way to school on a daily basis. And of course, we do our regular prayers like meals and things like that. Now, I, with six kids, we are all over the place every day. It's like my wife and I have to have a meeting every day just to know who has to be where and when. And so on the weekends, particularly on Sunday, I will gather the family together and we will say a rosary together uh, as a family. But we do our decades together in the car. And um, one of the things I think, uh, you know, it sounds kind of I don't, I'm not sure if this is the convert in me speaking or what. Sometimes I have to be careful that I don't just say uh, a rosary or something like that. I, we need to teach our children to be able to talk to God. Amen. Right, that you can have a running conversation with our Lord. And really, you think about it, that's what our lives are supposed to be. They're supposed to be a life of prayer that isn't just limited to those times when we're engaged in a particular kind of finite prayer, as the spiritual mm -hmm. theologians talk about. Paul says, be in constant prayer. Mm -hmm. And so the way we do that, and one, one of the ways we do that is by talking to God on a regular basis and just telling him what's going on in our heart and asking him for help and thanking him and praising him. Excuse me, praising him. Those are the kinds of things that I maybe I need to do a little bit better job actually instilling in, in my children. You know, I remember a, a week ago, uh, it was a very critical time in the ministry trying to get new social media up and running. The launch of the, the second season, Long Ride Home, was about to happen. We were working on editing season three. There were so many things that I was doing. And every time I, I moved forward on something, I would hit a, a speed bump. Okay, well, now I'll try it this way. Yeah, this is working. Then I hit another wall and another wall and another wall. And at one point I said, honey, will you pray for me? And she prayed for me. But still, it, it continued. There was, uh, we kept hitting speed bumps or hitting walls or something. And then finally I said, let's stop and pray. And this had kind of been accelerating over the course of several days. We stopped and we prayed. Uh, we bound Satan. Uh, 
we prayed for the angels to come and fight for us. We prayed to Hail Mary. We asked God to intervene for us. And from that moment, it was like clear air. There's something very powerful about when a husband and wife and a family pray together or two or more agree. It's not, you can pray by yourself, but praying with your family, super powerful. I'd also say this, Bear, that um, praying is one thing. Uh, obviously, it's foundational in so many ways. But if you have the opportunity to get your family to a daily mass, that's, uh, that's the best catechesis you can possibly imagine. And so we go, and, and it's all over the place. Don't get me wrong. It's chaotic. But we make the sacrifices that we need to uh, to get to whatever mass it might be with the kids as often as we possibly can. And yes, sometimes schedules impede that. But more often than not, in fact, way more often than not, all of my kids are going to daily mass and it might not be all of us together as a family, but we're driving them here and there to, to get them to that. And if they have a life of prayer combined with the sacraments, that's it. That's the foundation of our faith. And that's how you grow in holiness. Mm-hmm. That's, that's incredible. Um, now you, now you have this, God is just, you've been on, I don't know if you, I wouldn't call it, We always say the adventure begins at the detour. I know in the last uh, six months, something tremendous is, been an op- opening up to you, and then one of those things is Next Level Catholic Academy. Um, I would like to, for you to share with us what's going on there. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah, I, I left my uh, my full time position at the St. Paul Center for Biblical Theology back in January, and really, uh, my my heart and my soul and what burns inside of me is the spiritual life, because every one of us is ultimately called the saints. But I think that's a cliche for too many of us. But the, the spiritual greats at the church, going all the way back in time to, to St. Paul, but you see this in Augustine and St. Thomas and John of the Cross and Teresa of Avila and so many others, they lay out what they call the science of sainthood. It's not a random free-for-all. There is a process by which each one of us goes through in order to become a saint. And this is what Next Level Catholic Academy is all about. I kind of systematically lay out in a series of videos. And I think I have there's north of 50 videos at present, almost 60 videos where I I do this systematic process of what does it mean, starting with the beginning of what are we made for? Divine life, like literally deification. And this is to me, this is the public secret of the Catholic faith. Mm -hmm. Why are we shouting about this? I mean, it's incredible what's offered to us. But then I lay out exactly what the saints say, how it is you do that. And it's all based around the three stages of the spiritual life. And it's not easy. This is not for wishy washy Catholics. This is for people who are ready to get holy because you recognize that this world's going to hell in a handbasket mm-hmm. all around mm-hmm. us and it's trying to take you and your loved ones with it and we got to mm-hmm. guys we got to step up and if if you don't have you're not armed for battle as bear talks about all the time you're going to go down and the way to do that is by understanding the process of the spiritual life which is a growth toward perfection in the spiritual life in the same way that we grow in the natural life. Just like you move from infancy and to adolescence and then into a, to adulthood in the natural life, it's the same thing in the spiritual life. And too many of us are still stunted and we, we haven't grown up. That's what the science of sainthood is really all about. That's Beautiful. the premier course inside Next Level Catholic Academy. NextLevelCatholicAcademy.org. We're talking with my friend Matthew. Com. Le- yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> Next Level Catholic Academy. Uh, yeah, nextlevelcatholicacademy.com. Right. Dot com. Okay, don't, don't, mess, don't mess that up with Matthew <laughs> Leonard. This is Bear Wozniak. Uh, we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. There's that beautiful scripture verse that says, Mary had a little lamb, it never became a sheep. It became a Christian and died of lack of sleep. I think that's kind of (laughs) something Matt and I can both know. But we have so much going on uh, at at Deep Adventure Ministries. We have the Ocean Sunrise Catechism. Uh, We have Long Ride Home, the motorcycle reality show on EWTN, the Bear Wozniak Adventure here. But we also have uh, some uh, merch for you guys 
If you go to deepadventure.com, go to our web store, we have a couple of my books, two of my books. We have uh, T-shirts. We got the Warrior Rosary. We have DVDs of Long Ride Home. We have so much. If you go to deepadventure.com and you can find out about, uh, we do our annual cruise every December. It's a cruise retreat coming out of Cocoa Beach. We have our annual uh, donor luau where Cindy teaches the hula and we may teach you guys how to surf. And then the next morning we take off on a Bahama cruise and we do a, and we do a retreat on the cruise. There's just so much is what I'm trying to say. So if you don't go to deepadventure.com and subscribe to our newsletter, you're going to miss out. So we encourage you to do that. We're talking with Matthew Leonard from nextlevelcatholicacademy.com. He's a good friend of mine, someone who I, I really respect and especially uh, have a new insight into him because I got to meet his young son, Jack, who I really, really have a really dig on that young kid. We're talking about next level Catholic and the, and the need for us to, uh, to be spiritual. So many men, Matt, they think that being spiritual means they have to become soft and feminine. <laughs> if if there is one thing that the spiritual life, that real Catholic spiritual life is, it is not soft and feminine. You know, the two of the underlying things, one of the prayer, we've talked about the sacraments, but uh, another huge portion of this is penance and mortification. And everybody, you know, dreads it when Lent comes because we got to give up this little thing or that little thing move, you know, to, to help men become men and give up some more things. But penance and, and mortification are not really things that are just reserved for Lent. That's a time when the liturgical calendar focuses on it a little bit more. But mortification, so I, th- let me define this for a second, because the difference between penance and mortification is that penance is what you do after you've sinned, more or less. You're paying the price, so to speak. Mortification is kind of preparation. It's that wall that you're building up to withstand the assaults of the evil one, mm. right? So it's strengthening your virtue muscles. Mm-hmm. So we need to mortify ourselves on a daily basis. And it doesn't have to be humongous things, uh, but it, it could be something as, as easy as, you know, not... Uh, not taking salt with your steak or giving up butter or eating something you don't like, but all kinds of giving little mortification. Butter, giving up butter? And giving no, up butter? No salt there. with my steak? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if you do these things, all it does is help you get mastery over yourself, which really, Amen. at the end of the day, that's what it's about, right? It's mm-hmm. about squashing self-love and gratifying our lower appetites mm. so that mm. we can live a more spiritual and holy life. And that isn't easy. That's not feminine. And there's nothing wrong with being feminine. Like right? Women have to do this, too. Well, we want women to be feminine. Yeah, of course. We want yeah. them to be feminine. And they're and we warriors. Don't want them to be, of, they're warriors, That's exactly of right. Yeah, you know, in fact, I, my wife made a point to me one time, Bear, where... I, I was in a liturgy that I was just kind of like, oh, brother, this liturgy, you know, and I called it feminine. And she corrected me and she said, no, that's not feminine. There's nothing wrong with feminine. That's a that's a bastardization of masculinity. Right on. Right and I on. thought, you know what, sweetie, you're absolutely right. Masculine mm-hmm. and feminine. God has the perfection of those things in himself. Beautiful. And we reflect that in our own gender. Mm. So as men. We want to reflect that in God himself. And that is a life of self-sacrifice. That's what it boils down to. That verse that you and I memorized when we were growing up, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, right? That's what it's all about. We give of ourselves just like Jesus Christ, and that isn't easy. But that's the road to eternal life. It begins with, I I think you're right, self-mastery, one of the four cardinal virtues. Um, i got to tell you, man, I mean— when we come from Hawaii to the mainland, it's kind of shocking what we see. Uh, just the physical condition of people. I'm not saying I'm in the greatest shape, but I'm 66. Last weekend, I, I podiumed in a surf contest with 250 people in it. Um, <laughs> nice. I'm still not in the kind of condition I would like to be, but I, I, I want to say that when I do my keto approach to eating, when I do, when I do a low-carb regimen, that is a, a form of mortification. Because mm-hmm. I've told my wife... Uh, Honey, I'm going to be with you all the way. What I mean by that is I'm going to be there when I want to be there when she dies. Wow. And and to do that, I have to live uh, I have to have mastery over what I eat, uh that I I work out. Of course my workouts are also my prayer times whether I'm surfing or 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 doing my long beach walks. Um that self mastery to say, "Honey, I'm going to be, How how many men, Matt, die early? I, I think Too most many. men. Too, I think most. They they 
They don't take care of themselves. They get a, they, they're, not, they're not physically strong, so they pull a shoulder muscle, and then, the, then that weakens them more, and then they pull their back, and it's all because they're not taking care of themselves. And in this walk of the spiritual life, when you've, you've been to um, the, uh, the Shroud of Turin Museum in um, Israel, yes. in Jerusalem, and you see the, the, the image, the, the, I guess the statue of Jesus, you know, where they've, they've, they've taken the, the Shroud of Turin and they show you what Jesus physically looked like. Um, isn't that dramatic? Yeah, it is. Physically, he was quite strong. Yeah, he's a carpenter for crying out loud. <laughs> well, he was more than that. He was a builder. <laughs> yeah, you know, he, if you go to Israel, you know he built with rock. You know, he was technon builder. You know, rock and wood, perhaps too. But yeah. he was he was ripped. He was strong. Uh, he fulfilled his mission. Paul was no slouch. Timothy walking over those mountains and and all those things. We need to be physically physically strong and healthy in part, and that's kind of like one of the uh, a, a fundamental of of the Christian spiritual life is self mortification. Yeah, Master body, himself. mind, and spirit, right? I mean, it, it all kind of goes together, doesn't it, Bear? Uh, because when we mortify those lower appetites and we can gain mastery over our, over our physical body, all that is doing is helping us gain mastery over our spiritual life as well. But you know, And even the guys who are physically fit, and there's so much money spent on physical fitness. Yeah, that fitness, can go the other know? extreme. Now, it, all of a sudden, it, it's all about it, self. That's exactly right. And— if you if you're going to focus too much on your your physical fitness and you're not focusing on your spiritual fitness, what's the point? Because yeah, only one of them's going to last forever. Yeah, well, right? the thing is, but when I when I'm physically fit, I'm fit to do my mission. I'm yes. more alert in the afternoons because I've done my midday workout. So I, true. I get up early in the morning. I sleep better because I've worked out. I get up early in the morning, have my prayer time. So I'm just saying it's really interesting how we can over-spiritualize almost in a Gnostic way. You know, the body is something to not even consider, not even think about. But it is part of, uh, of our stewardship, of our kuleana, as we say. In oh, man. Uh, this, this is such a huge point, Bear, because this is where you're getting into trouble with a lot of the, uh, even the transgender and all the rest of that kind of stuff. It's the, the lack of an understanding of what you just touched on, which is that we are a union of body and spirit, of body and soul. And you can't separate those two things. You can't pray well if you're physically exhausted. You can't pray well if you're sick because you're not taking care of yourself mm -hmm. or if you're going downhill physically and your, your immunities are down and all of us, you're just not going to be able to pray well. Yeah, it gives you something to offer up, but you know what? You can offer things up regardless of whether or not you're healthy or sick. And so you have to take care of those things. And when I say that this is an underlying problem with regard to a lot of things in uh, our devolving culture we're not Lego pieces. You can't separate your body and soul and just slap mm -hmm. on a different Lego piece mm -hmm. on top of it. It doesn't work like that. You are a union and you can't separate that. And so you can't change who you are interiorly just by getting an operation. But that, that whole mindset and that understanding plays into your spiritual life as well because what you do physically has an impact on who you are spiritually. Well, it is true. I know every year I used to always set a physical goal for myself. Sometimes like getting a black belt or long bicycle paddle or something. Uh, uh, but it was like I was working on fortitude from the outside in. No, though, anything like that isn't a, is not a, uh, a physical thing. In the end, it's, a spirit, it's an inner spiritual thing to pedal that pedal one more time, to paddle one more stroke. Um, it's, it's developing the virtue of fortitude and self-mastery that go, to, go hand in hand. But have you, if, if you, if, if, you're the temple of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Look at what you've allowed to happen to the temple. If you went to if you went to the the church, you go, wow, they haven't trimmed the shrubs and they haven't done this and the things are a shambles. You would just you would you would like what's wrong with that church, man? Get it, take care of yourself. Get in shape. Get eat right. Uh, get some exercise, and 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 pursue virtue in in the physical area of your life so that you can be more alert, have more stamina spiritually in every other way, and be a real servant to your family. We kind of got off on that tangent. It's one of the, one of the things that I really, I really feel strongly about and know what very few people ever speak about. It's interesting that that's the first thing you talk about, Matt, when we begin to talk about the spiritual life, uh, and that's uh, mortification and self-mastery of the physical part of our life. We're talking with Matthew Leonard from Next Level Catholic Academy .com. Uh, he, he's in, he's in, he lives in Franciscan. Are you right next to the Franciscan University of Steubenville? I got to interview him and his beautiful son Jack for a long ride home when I was out there. 
Uh, we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell. Men, yes, we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bear's Man Cave, a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to thank our beautiful uh, corporate sponsor, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, Tom Gripe and Reba, and of course Bettina, all of the people there at Notre Dame. Uh, just the most amazing uh, experience I've had of, of service, uh, of personal service uh, ever, uh, how they've taken care of me and my family. And also when you go in and when you actually walk into the credit union, it's like it's something special. You know, it's, it's like almost like the Lord is there. I, I feel a sacredness about what they're doing because they're there to serve your financial needs, but they serve you not to make a profit, but because they're joining together to help you. So go to our website, deepadventure.com or go to NotreDameFCU.com uh, and find out more about Notre Dame Federal Credit Union. We're talking with my good friend, Matthew Leonard, and we're talking about the principles of, uh, of how to become a hero. All men are called to be heroes. All men and women are called to be heroes. It's our favorite movies, right? It's about heroes. And you're talking about that, the essence of what it means to become a saint. And you've, we, we started out talking about self-mastery. What's, what, what else do we need to know? Well, you know, it's funny you mentioned hero movies, Bear, because I think lots of times we take a look at the landscape as it stands right now, and you're like, man, you know, the church looks like it's down. There's crazy stuff happening here and there. People are leaving the church. We just heard recently about how few Catholics actually believe in the Eucharist, and it's easy to get overwhelmed and to kind of lose heart. But every hero movie is basically they're always going uphill, right? And you finally conquer in the end. It's always like kind of an underdog story. And I think that's what we have to bear in mind, even as we are dealing with the situations uh, that, that are around us and we're trying to grow in holiness and grow in the spiritual life. We already know how it ends. And so often, right? Matt, we think it's up to us. Well, how? Yeah. We, look at what's <laughs> happening to the church. What are we going to do? Right. Well, there's certainly a part that we play. Right. But uh, we kind of get too big for our britches sometimes and so we don't think the Lord's, you know, that's exactly right, because it's all the work of the Holy Spirit. That's all we really are, are vessels of the Holy Spirit. So each one of us on an individual basis has to step back and say, okay, what is God asking of me in relation to what is happening around me? And number one, it's always, I have to get holy, right? Mm -hmm. Because I, I cannot evangelize other people unless I have first been evangelized. And that means taking a hard look at your spiritual life and what practices are you doing? What virtues are you working on? What's my predominant fault? Am I working on that? There are all kinds of very practical things that we can do to get holy. And then you you spread your, your vision a little bit bigger and you say, if I'm a married man, what about my family? Like that's my vocation mm -hmm. is to my wife and my children and my grandchildren if you have them. And then you spread a little bit further to the community around you. So everyone who's in your sphere of influence, those are the people to whom God is asking you to be that beacon that you were talking about and earlier. Is he, and is he calling you to become all perfect and... Well, you know, I've really been working on my interior myself. I, I'm learning how to have these dialogues with myself. Or is he causing you to look outward at the Lord first and then to give your life away? self well, it's, is how you it's become holy. It's true. It, it's a both and, I think. And, and I mean, obviously, we know in Matthew 5, 48, Jesus says, be perfect even as your heavenly Father is perfect. So that is the ultimate goal. But to your point, it's not going to happen without the power of God. And I think we step back and we're like, well, how in the world am I going to get perfect, God? I mean, don't you know who I am? Haven't you seen all my faults and my weaknesses? Yeah, he knows, which is why he says with God, all things are possible. 
because it's God working. And so, you know, we're talking about virtues. Humility is a number one because humility clears the, the room, so to speak. So we allow more of God to fill us up and be that strength so that in our weakness, God is strong. That's what it's all about. Yeah, I glory in my weakness, you know. Paul that's exactly said. right. Yeah, that's so beautiful. Humility clears the room so that you can hear the still small voice of God. Deep is calling to deep as the cataracts roar. You can hear God whispering, you know, open up the door. Just open up the door. Sometimes it's like in life, we make a lot of bad decisions, for me especially, and then I, because of it I have to develop the gift of fortitude. But there is that image. I remember a long time ago someone told me about a man was petting a cat. And the cat was just bristling, and it's, you know how they 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 raise their their back, yeah. and the cat just hated it. But the man was just petting him so tenderly, and just saying, "Turn around, cat, turn around," because he was petting him across the grain of his of his fur. And so often we we see life circumstances and how tough they things are, and God is just saying, "I'm I'm loving you. I'm allowing these things to happen to to say to you, turn around." And then you'll experience the grace and the, and the power of God, you know, kind of bringing you along. What do you say to, to the man right now that's listening to this saying, yeah, I need to get my life right with God? Well, the first thing I would say is if you need to, get to confession. I mean, that, that's always where you begin. And confession isn't just something that allows you to get back to the Eucharist, uh, although that's obviously a huge part of it. The, the power of if confession is that, you actually get virtue or uh, graces in confession to help you fight the vice, the particular vices that you actually confess in the confessional, which is a huge reason to make a really good examination of conscience before you get into that confessional. Prepare before you go in there. Make a great confession. Get the graces that you need to fight and get to the Eucharist as often as possible. And then I would say you've got to start a regimen of, of uh, spiritual activity. You have got to set time aside on a daily basis for prayer. And it's going to be really, really difficult. There is no doubt about it, which, again, is why the catechism says prayer is a battle. You're going to fight mm. distraction. You're going to fight interruption. You're going to fight everything uh, interiorly, and it's going to be really hard. But you persevere uh, because at the end of the day, praying and in being in conversation with God, that's what you're made for. And so that you will find as you move on and you keep at it, just like other things in, in life, the more you do it, the easier, so to speak, it becomes. It doesn't mean distractions go away, but it means you're starting to, your, your body is starting to soften and being formed into the mold of Jesus Christ. That's, so That's what happens in prayer. You know, Matt, uh, maybe 10 years ago or more, there was a gentleman came to Hawaii, Christian Okoya. He was known as the Nigerian nightmare. He was yeah, an all, yeah. all pro running back and he wanted me to take him surfing. Wait, was man, he the Chiefs or was he the Chargers? No, he was the he, Chiefs. He was with okay. the Chiefs. He was so strong that I never saw somebody paddle so bad because he couldn't hardly lift his <laughs> muscles because he was so strong. Uh, but you mentioned this thing about how God will reform us, our bodies and our souls. But I asked him this question, Christian, how do you stay in such good shape? And he said, because I have an appointment in, in my gym every morning at 6 a.m. And everyone knows not to try to schedule an appointment. If they do, I'll say, I'm sorry, I already have an appointment. Um, if we had that same, if he established that same sort of appointment with God, you know, if we were to do that, I mean, what is a disciple but someone who understands discipline? But discipline with a goal in mind to be a hero. I've trained in the martial arts most of my life. Um, you know, watch all these martial arts shows, all these hero shows. Even though it's just TV, those guys are really amazing. Those men and women are really amazing what they can do with the body mechanics, uh, through discipline and training. But they have a goal in mind. You need to have a goal in mind that you want to be, as Matthew said, a saint, to be someone who lives heroic virtue. But to do that, it takes, what is the essence of, what would you say would be a good pattern of life for someone who wanted to be, quote unquote, a disciple, a, a man, a woman of discipline? Well, it's going to look different depending on what your vocation is. Uh, first of all, we always have to be mindful of our station in life. St. Francis de Sales hammers on this. Um, for, That's really important to say because people get guilt trips sometimes. Because Absolutely. Yeah, and, and, quite, and, yeah. and it might not look the same every day either, Bear. I mean, you know, I, I get up early in the morning. The spiritual giants always talk about 
early morning is the best time to pray because that's when you're most alert. Don't turn on your cell phone. Don't let any distraction get in. Just focus on God first. Now, sometimes that life of prayer, that time of prayer that I set aside gets interrupted because a kid wakes up earlier than he normally does and I get pulled away. Or you're on a flight somewhere or, you know, yes, so many things. That's, yeah. that's exactly right. So you, you base, you adjust based on your schedule and, and be careful too, with regard to station in life that you don't lose your focus because our spiritual lives are there to inform and strengthen how it is we love God and love neighbor. Right. And so in the beginning, I remember when I got so jacked up about the spiritual life, I was I was forgetting my responsibilities as a dad. Right. And exactly. I would go hide myself in a closet, you know, to pray and all that. And I was neglecting what it is I was supposed to do and what right. all this was supposed to inform. And so you got to be really careful of that. So uh, I, prayer early in the morning. And then if you can get the mass. I just know Francis de Sales when I read that, it was like, ah, that makes so, so according to your station in life. But when you do that, when you develop that kind of discipline, um, it's like you, there, there's like a, instead of a physical strength, you're developing that spiritual strength, that spiritual stamina. We're talking with Matthew Leonard from nextlevelcatholic.com. We've just, nextlevelcatholicacademy.com. We've just scratched the surface, but Matt, they can go there and f- become part of this, the, this, uh, this course on um, Catholic, going deeper in your Catholic faith and spirituality. Yeah, no, there's a, a more than at present, there's more than 1500 Catholics who are in there and, and which really gratifies uh, me in the sense that uh, there are people out there who want to grow in holiness. Well, we need yeah, to fill a stadium, dude. Yeah, we need really. 50,000 50, people. I mean, Bear, why, why is it? Why is it that our churches are not busting at the seams? If we were really talking about what is offered in Catholicism and what real Catholic life looks like, starting with this spiritual life mm-hmm. and and all that they're supposed to go through in order to become a saint, if people really understood what the end goal was and what it's all about, we, we would have trouble building churches big enough. We're yeah. just so terrible at talking about it. Yeah, we need men to be men again and come together uh, with their brothers and begin to rebuild the church. And, Huge. Um, and there's nothing more manly than a man of prayer. We've been talking with Matthew Leonard. We've already run out of time. Uh, nextlevelcatholicacademy.com for Matt and, of course, uh, deepadventure.com for us. Go to our YouTube channel because if you go there, you get to see Matthew Leonard instead of just listen to him uh, because the, we, we, this is posted up on YouTube. And by the way, if you go to our Deep Adventure, uh, go to Patreon, to our Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure page and you begin to donate, you get to have uh, early access. Like we've interviewed Matt five months ago before this even airs. You can have that the week we, we interview. You can get, we'll send it to you, a video version of it, which you can share with your friends. And then our Long Ride Home TV show, you get, we'll send you all, all of our episodes that have already aired on EWTN. Plus, every time we do a new director's cut for the next season, you get it, which can come, sometimes can be nine months early. So please support our ministry, and please support Matthew Leonard's ministry. He's got six kids, I forget. Six so children. So far, yeah. <laughs> and and uh, his ministry is well worth supporting. To go to Next Level... Uh, catholicacademy.com and become part of that that academy and, and go deeper in the Lord. Thank you, Matt. Bear, what you're doing is fantastic. Guys, support him, and God bless everything you're doing for the yeah. kingdom, Bear. Yeah, we love each other, don't we, Matt? We do. We see each other in the battle, and, and, and the men, men around the world are joining together, uh, joining us in the fray. Um, Amen. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha! I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell.